So we're going to look more at exponents. Now if I'm raising a power to a power, what happens? What does it mean for that exponential notation? So just like we were working before in the previous section, we're going to break it down into products as far as we can go. So this first expression, we're going to consider this guy. What's happening? What is my base that I'm raising to the power 4? Everything on the inside here. So my base, I'm raising 3 squared to the 4th power. So anything on the inside, that times itself 4 times in total. So as we look at this, how can we break it down? So this thing times itself four times in total. So three squared times three squared times three squared times three squared. Okay, so just breaking down, what does that fourth power mean for my base? It times itself four times in total. But now we can break these down even farther as well. Because three squared means my base is three, that times itself two times in total. So from the first one, we're getting 3 times 3. From the second one, 3 times 3. 3 times 3. 3 times 3. And do those parentheses matter? No. Multiplication is associative and commutative. The order doesn't matter, and how you're grouping doesn't matter. So we can get rid of all of those. So how can I write this concisely? How many factors of 3 do I actually have? Because that's my base that's involved. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them all together. So how is the relationship related in the beginning? If I add those two, do I get eight? No, but how can I combine them to get eight if I multiply those together? So when we raise a power to a power, we multiply these together. So this is really three raised to the two times four. So instead of having to write out every single step, okay, break down this base and this power, and then break down this base and this power, this base, this power, do it a bajillion times, this will get us there faster. When I raise a power to a power, I multiply the exponents together. So for any real number a, and integers m and m, they don't have to be positive. When we raise a power to a power, we multiply the exponents together. So we want to start simplifying, and we want to write these with positive exponents if we can help it. So the first one, what are we looking at there? I'm raising a power to a power, so this is going to be 3 raised to the 5 times 4, which is really to the 20th. 3 to the 20th, so I've got 20 factors of 3 being multiplied together. Imagine having to write it all out and count them. If you forget these rules, you can always fall back on this, but it's time consuming. And we have positive exponents there, so we're done. We could calculate what it is, but it's going to be big, and we're not going to worry about it. Second one, B, raising a power to a power. Take our base, and we multiply the exponents. So this is really 2 to the 10th. And we want positive exponents. We have positive, so we don't have to do anything else. For the third one, again, raising a power to a power, we multiply those. Our base isn't changing, but when we multiply 5, negative 5 and 7, we're looking at negative 35. But we don't want to have negative exponents, so how can we rewrite this with positive ones using what we learned from yesterday? So 1 over y raised to the positive fifths. Look at the reciprocal of everything. Base doesn't change, but the sign of the exponent does. And the last one. Again, raising a power to a power, we multiply those together. So we're looking at x to the negative eighth. And again, we want to write everything with positive exponents, so we look at the reciprocal. Keeping the base the same, all that changes is the sign on the power. Right, so we got a good handle. If you don't remember the rules, you can always fall back on an example like this to figure them out. But it's going to save time if you get comfortable with it now. So we're going to look at these two. What's the difference between 
to a cubed and to a quantity cubed. So the first one, what are we saying? What is our base for the power 3? What is it attached to? Only to a. So this tells me I'm taking 2 and multiplying it by a times a times a, 3 times in total. But now, what is my base down here? What is 3 attached to in that case? Okay, 2a times 2a times 2a, 3 times in total. 2a times 2a times 2a. So, we're going to figure out what it means when I have a power on the outside and a product on the inside. How do I take care of simplifying it? So multiplication is associative and commutative. So I can get rid of the parentheses and change the order around and regroup as I please. So I'm going to write it in this way. Everything's being multiplied, so I can group the twos together that are all being multiplied. And I can group the a's together. So I've got one, two, three twos, one, two, three a's. And we can write these concisely using that exponent notation. So, how many factors of 2 do I have? They're all being multiplied. My base is 2 raised to the third power. And, again, I have three a's. My base is a. I've got three factors that are all being multiplied together. So, when I have a product for my base, so more than one thing on the inside, and a power out there, we just distribute the power. So I give 3 to my base 2. And I also give the power 3 to my base a. And again, as always, if you forget any of these rules, you can write out every single chunk just based on the definition of the exponent. The base times itself that many times. Write it out. See what you get. So with math, there's not really one specific way that we have to stick to when we're solving these kinds of problems. So if you like to work towards having all of your exponents be positive first and then start distributing powers, you can go that route. Or we can just do the multiplication and then deal with the negatives at the end. The order doesn't really matter. So for part A, we want to simplify these and write them with positive exponents. That's just kind of a given from now on. We need the exponents to be positive. So what happens in this case? I have a product on the inside here for my base and I'm raising powers to powers. So what does that mean for that 3? So the first thing we have to discuss really briefly, what is the exponent on 4 right now? Currently he has a little 1 written on there, unspoken. So when I distribute my 3 to each of these, what am I looking at? We multiply the exponents together. So first I have to give it to 4 to the first, then I have to give it to x squared. So if it's helpful to break it down into these chunks, go ahead and write that out. If you can do it in your head, by all means, make it faster. So, what am I looking at? Raising a power to a power, we multiply those powers together. So 3 times 1 is 3. And again, raising a power to a power, we multiply those together. We're looking at x to the 6th. And we can simplify 4 to the 3rd. We'll start practicing with those. So 4 times 4 gives me 16, times another 4. We're looking at 64x to the 6th. And last check, are all of our powers positive? Yes. For part B, similar story again. What is my power on 5, unspoken 1? Anything raised to the first power is itself. So we have to distribute 4 to each of these terms, each of those parts of our product. So what are we looking at? 5 to the 4th, and I've got x to the 3rd raising it to the 4th, y to the 5th raising it to the 4th, z squared to the 4th. Again, if you can skip this step, by all means, go for it. So, 5 to the 4th. 5 times 5, 25, times another, 125, times another, 625. And how many factors of x do I have? When I'm raising a power to a power, I multiply those together. So I'm looking at 12. 
and 20 factors of y, and how many factors of z? 8. And can we do anything else? Do we have positive powers, positive exponents? Yes. So we're simplified as far as we can go. Now for part C, we haven't dealt with a negative yet, but behaves just the same as what we had before. If I have a 5, you know, it has a to the first power on it. It just happens to be negative. So in this case, again, we need to break down each of the terms. So I'm looking at negative 5 to the third, because I have to distribute 3, the power to every single term. And then multiplying it by x to the fourth to the third, y to the third to the third. So the trickiest part about this one is the negative 5. Is it going to be positive or negative in the end? So I've got an odd number, so it's going to be negative. And what is it going to be? 5 times 5 is 25, times another will give me 125. So if you take care of if, it, if it's going to be positive or negative, and then deal with the, co the constant, it'll be a little bit easier. And how many factors of x do we have? Raising a power to a power, multiply. y, raising a power to a power, multiply. But, this is negative out on the front. Do we care about that? There's no way that we can take care of it. We don't care. We can have our bases be negative. What we care about being positive are the powers. So be careful when you're working on those. We don't care if the base is negative. That's totally legal. Okay. Next. Now we have a negative. And again, we're raising a power to a power. So what's happening in this case? There's lots of different ways that you can go about it. You can first take care of raising the power to power and multiply those together. You can go that order if you want. So I'm looking at negative x raised to the 50th. And when it looks like that, what is this base really saying? It's really saying negative 1 times x raised to the 50th. Because before, when we had a negative, it was attached to a real constant, not to a variable. We could have split negative 5 up into negative 1 times 5, get the same answer. So, if I split this into 2, if I'm looking at raising negative 1 to the 50th, if I'm going to distribute again to each of these terms, and x raised to the 50th, what's going to happen with this negative? So I have an even power and a negative on the inside. So when I multiply an even number of negatives, what does it turn into? It turns into a positive, and one times anything is always, you know, whatever's left. So this is going to simplify to positive x to the 50th. But we still could plug in x and have it be negative. But is the result ever going to be negative? If I'm raising it to an even numbered power, it's always going to be positive. So you have to be careful with those cases. Always make sure to evaluate the negatives, raising that to the power as well. So here, it was odd. Odd power with our negative, so it turned out to be negative. Even power with our negative turns out to be positive. So that's a good thing to know, good thing to remember. Let's write that down. So an even power makes negatives turn into positives. Odd power on a negative makes the result negative. So even power, negative turns to a positive. Odd power, negative, remains negative. And let's look at this last case. We have negatives and negative powers. So we're going to have to do a little bit more work here. But let's just go ahead and distribute, again, minus 4 to each term. We'll do that first. But you can go in whatever order you want. So I'm looking at negative 2 raised to the negative 4. x to the negative 5th to the negative 4 and y to the 4 to the negative 4. So the advantage of doing this first and distributing 
is some of those powers are going to turn out to be positive, even though they might look like they were going to turn out negative. So we won't have to move that x term at all, but the other ones we're going to have to. So let's see, what are we getting out here? I need to be able to rewrite anything that's negative, any powers that are negative, with a positive power. So how do I rewrite just this first term? Negative 2 raised to the negative 4. So the base is going to remain negative. That never changes. But now my negative 4 is going to turn into a positive down here. And as we evaluate our next term, this is going to be x raising a power to a power. We multiply them together. Negative times a negative, positive. 5 times 4, 20. Do we have to move him down below? It's already positive power. We don't have to worry about it. And last, I'm looking at y raised to the negative 16. So as we start to simplify one step farther, he's going to have to move. So what do we have down below here? With the first term, we can evaluate negative 2 to the fourth. And is it going to be positive or is it going to be negative? So I've got an even power, so it's going to be positive. And what are we looking at? 2 times 2, 4, times 2, 8, times 2, 16. So I've got a positive 16 down below. And we still have that x to the 20th up top, so I don't need that placeholder 1 anymore since I actually have something living upstairs. 1 times x to the 20th is just x to the 20th. So we've taken care of the first term, taken care of the second. Where does the third need to go? Down below, we look at the reciprocal, and we make the power positive. All right. Now, if you had one and two, start off with making the powers positive, then distributing. You can go that route. You'll come down to this same answer as well.